Well, good afternoon, everyone. If you are somewhere in the United States or South America, good evening. If you are in Europe or Africa, hello, a special hello to our loved ones in Ukraine. We are with you. We follow you. We love you. Greetings to people all around the world. I'm Fred Plotkin. Welcome to Fred Plotkin on Fridays on Idajo, the place where classical music and opera happen. Adagio is a video and streaming service dedicated to supporting artists and to making classical music and opera available to fans all around the world. I'm Fred Plotkin. Today is March 18th of 2022. I'm very happy today because it is my 100th program of Fred Plotkin on Fridays on Adagio, and I'm grateful to everyone there, especially my engineer, Johan, who have gotten me to this point. For my 100th program, I wanted someone really special, and I got someone really special. The magnificent Italian soprano, Eleonora Burato, and I cannot roll the R's, so I'm gonna ask her to say, <laughs> say hello, Eleonora Burato everybody and thank you so much for inviting me would you say your name with the proper r's eleonora burato that's fantastic <laughs> eleonora burato which i say imperfectly is from one of italy's great cities in italy there's a description cento le cento città the hundred cities and these are cities that one finds all over the peninsula that are repositories of culture and tradition. And yes, we love Rome, Florence, Venice, Milan, Naples, certain of the very big cities, Genoa, Torino. But there are these smaller cities that are magnificent and you can spend a lifetime visiting the Cento Città. I've been to 99 of the 100, I'm saving one. And, but I will say that Mantova, or as we say in English, Mantua, is really one of the greats. It is in the southeast corner of Lombardy. It borders on Emilia Romagna, on Veneto. It is um, on the Mincio River, and the Mincio River feeds into the Adriatic Sea. It is fed by lakes surrounding the city. There's a lot of water around Mantova. Mantova in 2016 was the European capital of culture. It thrived under the Gonzago family. It was married into by the Este family from Ferrara. The level of taste and beauty and sense of history, even by Italian standards, is extraordinary. I'm going to have Eleonora talk about Mantova, but I just want to say one thing about it. It is the place where Claudio Monteverdi in 1607 premiered his opera Orfeo. Now, opera began about 10 years before that in Florence, but the first great opera, the first masterpiece of opera was without a doubt Monteverdi's Orfeo. It's still performed today. So therefore the oldest opera that's still done is <clears throat> from Mantova. And therefore when Eleonora Burato joins me today as a Mantovana, she bears with her a lot of that culture. So, Eleonora, would you talk to us about Mantova? Uh, thank you for the beautiful description of my city. <laughs> you say a lot, so I, I don't know how <laughs> what I can say more. Um, well, what does yeah. Mantova look like? Um, for me, Mantova is... Um, is, is a not 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 only a beautiful city, but it's my home. So um, where where I have my my family, where um, I I went to school when I studied. So uh, there I have my friends. So um, when when uh, when I don't when I don't work around the world. I, I like so much. I love to to come back to my to my city, to my family, of course, but not not only for my family, but to walk uh, in, uh, in on the in the street of, of Mantova because, uh, uh, like you said, it's um, it's full of culture. It's um, a city 
um, of Renaissance. And um, so I, I love it. I always loved it. And I don't know, but you, you, can, you can visit many, many things. And it's a small city, so you can spend just a weekend. It's enough to enjoy the, the beautiful uh, monuments uh, and uh, buildings, uh, um, paintings, uh, so many things, and also food, of course. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about the food in a bit, but let's talk about the Palazzo Te, about Andrea Mantegna, one of the great yes, Renaissance la, papers. La Camera degli Sposi, the Chamber of... Uh, yep. Wedding, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the wedding couple. And that was Isabella d'Este and Francesco Gonzaga, if I remember. Yes. Uh, so did you did you visit Mantova or not? Oh, not many, yet. many times. And, oh, okay, yes. So, many, so you, many times. I love Mantova. I'm Mantovana and I went there only twice. It's a <laughs> shame. <laughs> but um, yes, it's... um. A chamber that, uh, with a fresco, non so I don't know how to say it. Fres frescoes. Frescoes. Frescoes uh, of Mantegna uh, the, with the, this beautiful family. And in, in, the, in the up. In the ceiling, the roof. Yeah. You, in the roof, yes. Yeah. You can see um, many, many angel, little angel in a, in a hole. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you, you it, it seems like you can you can see uh, uh, um, above to heaven yeah to heaven but it's yeah. not and it's it's a very very uh, beautiful really really it is beautiful. one of the most beautiful rooms in the world that I've ever been to I think so and another thing about Mantova that I always think of before we get to the food is because of all that water there the river the lakes that surround it. It's a very wet city. It's a very, there's a lot of moisture, a lot of nebula, a lot of fog. A lot it's, of mosquitoes in summer. A lot summer. of mosquitoes <laughs> also. It's very particular for that. And the people, and you're one of them, have very beautiful skin because the moisture there in Mantova means... Humidity, every, yes, humidity. Right, it, it's like having a facial every day when you're in Mantova and you feel it on your face. It's very nice. I'm not complaining about that. really curious because of the, um, the makeup artist in the mat, uh, every, every, every time he, um, he met me, so he told me, what a beautiful skin you have. Yeah. <laughs> What's your secret? Probably is the fogging of the... <laughs> it's Mantova, I know that. Thank you, Mantova, for <laughs> you know, I mean, it's if you need a, a beauty conditioning, you go to Mantova, you see the art, yes. you eat the food, and you just walk around in the in the moisture. Yes, you you spoke about Mincho, but uh, I lived very uh, very close to Mantova in in a small town called Sustinente, and mm -hmm. there uh, there is Il Fiume Po, the Po River. Yes, Po River. So it's a uh, see, but. We, we are very, very uh, full of water, yes. It's, so it's... Uh, people, yes, there's the famous lake district further north in Lake Garda, Garda Lake, lake Como it's... Maggiore. But these are, this is not what we think of as the lake district of Italy, but it's an area where you have the largest river, then you have the Po, mm -hmm. then you have the Mincha, which is also a significant yes, river. Mantova, Mantova has a three small lake. Mm -hmm. Uh, superiore di mezzo inferiore yeah and so but i i like so much uh, lake and water that when i moved i choose uh, another small town uh very close to uh iseo lake do you know mm -hmm. iseo, lake? I iseo do. lake it's um Piemonte? Uh, small... no 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 always lombardia lombardia but yes. close yes it's close to garda garda lake yeah Oh, yes. More, uh, how can I say? More savage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, more wild. Yes, it is. Than, than Garda Lake. Garda Lake is uh, very famous uh, for tourism and mm -hmm. uh, holiday from uh, the north of Europe. But Iseo Lakes too. But it's not so um, uh, known. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm going to get very technical here because Iseo Lake there's a lot of moisture there too, a lot of uh, humidita. 
And yes. <laughs> therefore, there's a lot of beautiful grass. As you said, it's very wild. A lot of um, natural grass and green grows there. And the cows who eat that grass produce a very famous milk that makes some of the best butter in the world. And you can taste in the Buro di Zeo, the butter from Lago di Zeo, all the you herbs in the... There. Yeah, in the, all the herbs that are in the grass of the cows, it's a very beautiful, natural thing. So one thing that everybody thinks of with Mantova, Mantua, is the opera Rigoletto yes. by Verdi. I think of Romeo and Juliet, too, because when Romeo is sent away from Verona, um, he's sent to Mantua. And but Rigoletto, there's a statue of Rigoletto in Mantova. And there's supposedly Rigoletto's house. So I have seen many productions of Rigoletto. I love Rigoletto. It's one of my favorite operas. I wrote a book called Opera 101 that Americans use to learn opera. And Rigoletto is the first opera I teach. So Rigoletto is set very specifically in Mantova in 1485. And it has the atmosphere in the music, I think, of Mantova with the nebbia, the fog, with people walking around in the dark, with buildings, with Renaissance palaces and portici, porticos, and so on. And when producers move it from Mantova 1485 to another place in another time, it loses something that's in the music that is a depiction of Mantova. You can hear Verdi, especially in the first act, evoking the sound of Renaissance music mm -hmm. for the festivals that were held by the Gonzaga family. Yes. And Verdi, being a master, understood how to communicate Mantova in a way that is something that I think we lose nowadays in many productions. So when you hear music from Rigoletto, do you hear and have a visual image of Mantova in the music? Yes, yes, in the music and uh, um, also in uh, in the characters. And so when when I when I when I listen uh, on Rigoletto, I, I I can perfectly imagine it in uh, in Mantova in in. Uh, in many many places because I, I I know I know Mantova very well so it's uh, for me it's a special opera and uh, I never I never sang it never no I'm so sorry about that but for my um, it's it's uh, uh, it's too late so it remains a a old dream, a dream. <laughs> yes. Well Maybe one day when you are 95, you can sing Madalena. <laughs> um, but also the last act, because the first act is set in the, in the Duke's palace and so on. But the last act is outside of town. It's on a Kashina that is near the Mincho River, near one of the lakes yeah. where Spadafugile and Madalena live. Mm. And when the planned murder of the Duke happens, it's supposed to happen in this area outside of Mantova. And whenever I watch the last act or even listen to it on a recording, I see the area, the lakes, the, the marshes, the, the wet <laughs> areas outside of Mantova, because I want listeners to understand it sounds like I'm talking about a place that's all mud. It's not fango. It's not. It is a magnificent Renaissance city with some of the most beautiful buildings and supreme artwork done in the Italian Renaissance. But just outside, it's a very different world. So when you see the opera Rigoletto, you have to imagine the walls of the city of all of this magnificent splendor inside the city of Mantova. But then once you're outside of the walls, it's really a different phenomenon. It's water, it's, it's, it's storms. You hear the and storm in the opera. Do, yes. do you know there is a building outside the city? Uh, um, you have to, uh, to across the, the, the bridge 
uh, after the bridge, at the very beginning of the, the city, there is a small building that we call, we call it uh, uh, House of uh, Sparafucile. <laughs> I didn't know that. Not true, of course, but uh, yeah. we, we, call, we call it um, Sparafucile House. It's mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, so you, you, can, you can imagine the, the, the distance of uh, the House of uh, Rigoletto, the House of uh, Sparafucile, the, the, the castle of, uh, of uh, Duca. So it's, uh, you can imagine everything. So when I talk about the greatness that comes from Mantova, yes, I mentioned Monteverdi, I mentioned Mantegna, I mentioned Eleonora Burato, but I also <laughs> mentioned Tortas Brizolona. <laughs> Would you please talk about my favorite Italian cake? Okay, yes, I and I love to cook it, but I don't know how to ex, um, to explain in uh, in in English because well, I, I don't can help you. I don't know the. If you want, I have the the receipt here. The recipe. The recipe. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, bring this, with me. This I is a very practical my, woman. She brings yes, her music. It's my special book of uh, receipt. <laughs> And so you know, I have very, very, I, I wrote, because I'm vintage, I've been a vintage woman. So I, mm -hmm. I, I had to, to write by hand. This is a ragu of my mother. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and what does your mother use? Does she use vitello, maiale, Yes, manzo? maiale and salsicha. Okay, so sausage, uh, pork, ground pork and ground veal. Not veal, sorry. It's um, beef, manzo. It's beef, yes. We we call cappello del prete or girello. Yes, so that's just one part of the, of the cow. I think shoulder, but I'm not sure. I'm not a cow so, anatomist, but <laughs> it is of my uncle Roberta. Uh huh. So I we need Tortas three three oh, yes. um, of farina so flour, flour white white flour 100 grams of uh, uh, f uh, um, yellow yellow f the Corn yellow meal yes you uh, um, the flour that you use to make polenta cornmeal okay yeah thank you mm -hmm. uh, 200 grams of uh, mandorle almonds almonds but these are white almonds. Are they ground or in pieces? You you can no. You have to uh, to cut one hundred and uh, still um, uh, Leave the others whole. Yes, whole. The yeah. Okay. Yes, and then two hundred grams of zucchero. Uh, um, uh, sugar. 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 Uh, due tuorli. Two, two egg yolks. Yes. Uh, lemon green zest. Grind, grinded. Corte limone, lemon zest. And 200 grams of butter. Without salt, senza sale. The, the secret is that you have to put everything together and work with the hands. Mm -hmm. Everything. So the... the, the the warm of the, the hands. The, the warmth of the hands, yes. Uh, scioglie. Softens. Softens the butter. Yes. And, and everything else. So when you, when you, when you find the, the, the la composizione. The proper texture, yes. You can put on the um, teglia. In a pan. In a pan. And uh, in the wave. For mm -hmm. 30 or 50, 40 minutes. At what temperature? 180, uh, 180 centigrade, which is 350 Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, this, so that's you, it. you bake it for 30 or 40 minutes, then you take it out, you let it you get have cool? To, you, have to, you have to check it. Okay. And does it have to get cool or can you eat it hot? No, no, very cold. 
Yes, Hold it. absolutely. That's important. So, all and, I can say and, is and probably, probably the the best thing you have to you can eat with the with brizolona it's zabaione. Zabaione, which is sort of an egg and a marsala cream, which you whip by hand. It's beautiful. Um, all I can say I is. I learned any, many things with you. <laughs> any Italian opera singer who travels with her family recipes is someone I would love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing your recipe for tortas brizolona. You're now, um, there are also tortelli di zucca, which are pumpkin filled ravioli or tortelli. The cuisine of Mantova, they use something called mostarda, and mostarda are fruit that are preserved in mustard oil, not prepared mustard, not zenf, not zenefe, not mustard, mutar, but it's mustard oil in which fruit are preserved and then finely chopped, and it goes into the zucca, into the pumpkin or squash, and also, there are salumi, which are cold cuts or, or charcuterie from Mantova that are very special. And you serve it on a platter with little pieces of fruit in mostarda. And that's just the first course. With, the, with grana also. With grana, which is, well, grana, okay, let's go there. Grana is a cheese that in five provinces only of Italy, Bologna, Modena, Parma, Reggio Emilia in Emilia Romagna, and Mantova in Lombardia are the only five provinces allowed to produce a cheese that's called Parmigiano Reggiano. Yes. <laughs> so when someone from Mantova says grana, what she means is Parmigiano Reggiano. No, no, no. Usually. We have we have two. Well we then have there's grana padano. padano. And and grana padano. Yes, it's right. our different. Are different. They are different, definitely. But a lot of people think they're the same thing and they're not. So you mean il grana, which is a very fine cheese made in the provinces near the Po River, Padana Po River. And it's an excellent cheese too, but just slightly different from Parmigiano Reggiano. Yes, but if, if you want to put Parmigiano in the tortelli, it's fine. Oh, yes. Of course. Yeah. But, and I don't put I don't put the um, the mustarda in my tortelli. Okay. Why? Only pumpkin okay. and a little bit of sugar if pumpkin is not too much sweet. Okay. Uh, lemon. Mm -hmm. uh, amaretti. Amaretti are biscuits that are made of. How do you describe <laughs> them? They're they're made with egg white and um, shell in a way of, I'm forgetting the term, it's a bit like almond, it's a very unusual thing. It's from a town in Lombardia called Salono. And everyone knows them as amaretti in English, amaretti. And, but they're crumbled and they're used in Italian cookery as well. So now that we've established you grew up in paradise, <laughs> where you eat fantastic food, you're surrounded by beautiful art, you get a skin treatment when you go out for a walk. Um, when did opera enter your life? Uh, opera uh, entered, in my, entered in my life uh, when I was uh, fif 15. No, maybe before, but I was uh, too too much yeah, too um, too much younger. So, yes, I I sang in a, a choir of uh, ch children choir, but for me it was uh, okay. I like to sing, so it's fine. I, I <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, when when I started to 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 listen opera and to understand it, uh, I was around uh, sixteen years old. So I, I went to my so to the Conservatory of Mantova. And, and then I started to appreciate appreciate to mm -hmm. my, very, very much the, the opera because uh, before I sang also in, uh, in a rock band, a cover band. <laughs> yes, because for me, the important, the most important thing um, was to sing. Uh, so 
it, it was it was my my dream. I, I want to sing. I want to sing. But I, I didn't I didn't know how exactly was my what exactly was my my path. Mm-hmm. So uh, I I tried many many ways and and then I found uh, opera. So thank God. And one of the people who found you very early in your career was the conductor Ricardo Muti. Yes, I was I was young. Yes. And Ricardo Muti is a different kind of maestro from most of the current ones in that he uses maestro in two ways, as a conductor, but also as a teacher. And so he sits at the piano and works with singers on their roles. So he taught Ambrogio Maestri the role of Falstaff. He taught Quinn Kelsey a lot about the opera Simone Bocanegra. Quinn was my guest recently, and he discussed that. And you worked with Muti early, but not in the famous Verdi operas, but in very unusual operas, uh, such as Yomeli's Demofonte. And the first time I heard you was in Saverio Mercadante's I Due Figaro, <laughs> which is an adaptation of the Beaumarchais stories of Figaro and Susanna and so on but in a different way. And I heard you do that in Salzburg and I immediately, you were Susanna, and I immediately noticed who was this lovely singer on the stage for your acting, but also for your musicality and for your use of the Italian language. So when we're talking about the fact that you worked with Riccardo Muti on, on this opera that nobody except Riccardo Muti knew, what impact did he have on you in developing your role of Susanna? He, he was uh, very, very important because um, um, not also for me, but for um, every, every singers involved in that production, uh, uh, it was a, a very, very beautiful experience, uh, um, musical experience, because uh, he, um, he spent a lot of time with us, uh, with pianoforte, and um, to, to find um, the, um, the the expression the expressions of the of the music the words um, so helped us so so much and find to to, to and helped us to, to find the 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 right dynamics mm-hmm. to, um, uh, to sing to sing better and to and to be uh, um, also a, a good actor actors in on, on stage so it's um, it was it was a, a really really big experience more more than Demofonte because Demofonte for me was uh, the first experience with him and in uh, a repertoire that uh, I, I I didn't belong so much so it was a, a it was really 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 strange beautiful mm. but uh, probably not uh, the um, not the best experience uh, in my repertoire, but I, I'm grateful also for, for that, of course. Uh, the first beautiful experience with him was uh, really Idwe Figaro. And uh, um, the experience of, uh, of um, Ambrogio, who talks about, uh, I, I, um, I did it last summer with the with Aida, because I went to Ravenna uh, to work with him uh, in uh, in his house with the pianist. So I um, I did a, a a job, a work, uh, music work before to start the also at the theater, mm-hmm. and this for me was the first time with him to do that, and. Um, Yes, I, I learned uh, a lot of things. Uh, all, always you can learn uh, uh, so much thing with them. So I just was thinking about this, that you're from Mantova. Muti is from Puglia and has a long experience in Naples and Napoli. Great musical places, great food places. He lives in Ravenna, another great food place, but very different from Puglia and Campania from Napoli. What did you eat with Ricardo Muti? <laughs> Did you eat anything? Uh, I think 
I eat with him uh, twice or <laughs> not so much, and, of course, uh, with uh, some other um, many, many people. So I don't know. But was it food of Ravenna, food of from the south? I think uh, he, he likes to food uh, to, to he likes to eat uh, good food. Yes. Well, he's Italian. <laughs> he's, yes, yes. And he, he didn't eat a lot. It's, no. Uh, no, no, it's very, how uh, do you Attento. He's very vigilant about his physique. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. And it shows. He's he's a healthy man and it shows. Okay, so, healthy and, and good food, yes. So just a little more about Muti. You then did Amelia in Simone Bocanegro, which to me, listeners know, is one of my favorite operas of all, not just Verdi, but of all. Amelia is a magnificent role. And then you did The Countess in Le Nozze di Figaro. And Muti is a fantastic Mozart conductor. Um, working with him in two of his specialties, Verdi and Mozart, did he work differently with those different operas where there's a different approach or is his music making the same no matter what the opera is? No, like a teacher, he used the same approach with the with singers. Of course, um, the music changes, so uh, we we can we can say different things, but the approaching is the same. Yes, so he he, he likes to uh, to spend a lot of time with uh, with singers. Uh, maybe not with uh, everybody, but <laughs> yes. Yes, Singers who inspire him. I've seen that yes, with him. Yes, if yes. he's inspired, he will spend a lot of time with the singer. Yes, exactly. And that's a wonderful thing. So I am turning slightly to a different direction, namely that Mantova is in Lombardia and Lombardia, Lombardy, was the Italian region that was most affected by COVID. I don't talk to my guests too much about COVID, but this is an exception because I have a very dear friend who lives in Bozzolo and he was there with his family and they were completely under lockdown, but completely Bozzolo being very close to Mantova. And I remember emailing with him and speaking to him when New York had not yet received COVID. We were about to. This week is two years that we had it, but Lombardy had it a month before. And maybe the city that was most devastated by COVID in Italy was Bergamo. Bergamo, is, Bergamo and Brescia, yes. And Brescia. And these are very musical cities, very important cities, north and a little west of Mantova. And Bergamo has the very large hospital for Papa Giovanni XXIII, Pope John XXIII, who was from Bergamo. It's one of the best hospitals in Europe. But when, when this virus hit and there was no cure at the time, Bergamo was devastated and the cathedral in Bergamo Alta, that's where they put the bodies of the dead people until they could be taken away. And Donizetti is buried in this cathedral and Donizetti's home where he grew up is just down the street. And so Donizetti is very much a presence in Bergamo. And I had a guest a few months ago, Ricardo Fritza, who's the head of the Donizetti Festival. And when finally there was a bit of a pause, some 6,000 people had died in Bergamo, which is shocking because New York City just passed 40,000. But in the space of a month or so, 6,000 people had died. And I'm sorry to go on this sad subject, but when Ricardo Fritza decided to play the Donizetti Requiem, he called on you to perform. And would you talk about that experience and about this music? We don't know the Donizetti Requiem as much as Verdi and certain others. For the soprano, uh, it's a, a really small uh, part to sing, but, um, but Ricardo wanted to um, uh, to ask me and the other singers uh, very, very close to Bergam. I lived in, uh, in Brescia, of course. So um, it was very, very 
touching moment. Um, I accept, of course, because it wasn't wasn't important to how and what, so how much I, uh, I can uh, I can sing in that. But uh, it was uh, the most important was the um, the memory for the for the victims. I I remember very very well the first three also um, in front of the cemetery of Bergamo, and uh, me and my colleagues cried mm -hmm. because. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's so. I and I cried too. I understand completely. So many, many, many people's dies. Yeah, and, and we 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 were there for for them. So yes, I know. Well, I'm I sorry I made you cry. No, but sorry, I, I, I'm very sensible in this period, so it's not to you. No, I understand. So oh. let's let's go. I just wanted to mention that because I wanted to acknowledge that you took a very important hard at a very important moment in, in recent Italian history. And I appreciate that. And I would have been there if I were traveling, but I was not at the time. Um, so I want to go in a different direction again. Mm -hmm. You have upcoming, I'm not going to talk about what you're doing tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a bit. But you have upcoming, you're playing the character of, we say in English, Desdemona, in Italian Desdemona. Yeah. In two different versions, <laughs> you are doing Verdi's Otello in Barcelona, and, and then you're doing Rossini's Otello in Pesaro. And the music, oh, okay, Rossini, okay. The music is quite different. They're both magnificent, but they're very, very different music. Very, very, very different. Music. The Rossini yes. lies <laughs> a little lower, I think. Am I correct? Rossini mm, depends, but because if, you, if, 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 if depends of what what kind of variation you can you can you can you can choose. So mm -hmm. you, you can you can see uh, what you want. Uh, of course, I will I will find the the, the right variation for my voice for my voice. Mm -hmm. And um, now I I I I took with me the score because. Uh, in a few days, I, I will start to also to study that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, before the debut for uh, for uh, Madame Butterfly, and then I can I can start to to study the other two important debut because you 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 don't know, uh, but I have also Anna Bolena. It's a big spoiler. I can ah. say, I can say <laughs> where. <laughs> I can say where, but uh, I have to study also also Anna Bolena. So, Judy Gialanna. <laughs> Judy Gialanna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this to me is always fascinating about a singer that she can live in her head and in her throat with various characters at the same time, in that you are. We'll talk in a moment about what you're doing right now at the Met. But after this, you're going to do Me, Me at the Met. It's a role in La Boheme that you've done numerous times beautifully. You are a fantastic Liu in Puccini's Tour and Thought. Really fantastic. Um, you, I don't think you've sung Tosca yet, and I don't think you want no, no, to no, sing no. No, 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 Not yet. No, 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 no. I sang the aria, of course, in a concert. It's possible right. that yeah. the the whole role and no, 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 not yet. But no, no. Um, you are about to sing your first Cho Cho San in Madama Butterfly at the Metropolitan Opera, and it will be on through. I wrote it down. I should know this uh, through early May, through May seventh with an international radio broadcast on April 30th on the Metropolitan Opera on Saturday, um, which people listen to around the world. And it's in one of the most beautiful productions in the Met Repertory by Anthony Minghella. So already you are in a production that lends flavor. It's just, it's an extraordinary thing, this production. I want people to see it, to hear you to hear Brian Jade, who is going to be your Pinkerton, 
here, Elizabeth Deshong. It's a wonderful cast. Yeah, it's wonderful cast. Yeah, and therefore you have everything going for you. But let me tell you my experience with Madama Butterfly, and then I would like to know your impressions of her. When I was a student in Bologna at the academy there, we did a production of Madama Butterfly at the Teatro Comunale. And I must, I was 22, 21 years old. I didn't like it. I just didn't understand it. I recognized the music, but I thought it was just too pretty. I didn't feel anything, but all around me, this Italian audience in the second act of three acts began to cry already in the second act because they knew what was coming. So I realized it's not their fault, it's my fault that I'm not yet experiencing this opera. And when I teach about opera going, I explain that if at first you don't like it or don't understand it, don't give up on it. Just wait for another production, wait until you have had more life experience. I say this now because now Madame Butterfly is one of my favorite operas, but it took me a long time to get to that. Uh, Leontine Price told me that it's the opera she most loved to sing, but not Aida, but this, Madame Butterfly, though she found it very painful, but she just felt that there was something in this character that doesn't exist anywhere else in opera, not just in her story and in her music, <laughs> but in the music that surrounds her. And I think that's what Puccini did so magnificently among many things, is that the music that surrounds Chocho san tells us of her heart. And once I learned to listen to the orchestra while watching the singer, I came to really love this opera and this character. So now that you have been working on her and you're about to premiere her, talk about Whatever you want to say about Chocho san I have to confess you something. Just uh, one year before, I, I was just like you. I didn't understand Butterfly, so I didn't like it. Not so, not so much. It, it wasn't one of my favorite operas. So uh, until I started to study it. Mm -hmm. When I started uh, to study uh, Butterfly, I completely fall in love with this role. And uh, uh, this production is, uh, is very touching because I, I, I read many, many messages uh, about the puppet. Many people hate the puppet uh, because uh, they- Let me they just think explain, the puppet is a um, bunraku puppet that's typical of Japanese theater. And this represents Chocho san's child. And there are many people who say they want a live little child and other people enjoy and appreciate the puppet. I came to appreciate the puppet because as someone who has directed and worked in opera, if you have a four-year-old child on the stage, you have to worry about the child. Will it be frightened? Will it fall? We did a production at the Met in the 80s with Catherine Malfitano where the child fell during the important scene and Catherine had to pick the child up and make sure it was okay. So it's easier to not deal with a live child. And, but you were saying you got a lot of messages about the puppet. Yeah. Because uh, the, the puppet is creepy, is uh, it's not uh, it's not real. Uh, why can't you find a real baby for do that? And, okay, uh, I can respect this this uh, this uh, thoughts, but uh, for me, uh, I, I would like that the people understand how much is important this puppet in this production, because uh, is almost alive. The three puppeteers are very, very uh, good and, uh, and very actors. So the, the, the little puppet is uh, almost real. He, he reacts of, of my action. Mm -hmm. So it's, it seems really 
real and I can I can embrace him um, uh, he follow me and uh, he, you, 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 you can see him sad happy and the faces is the same but the yeah. gestures um, it's it's for me unbelievable and and the first uh, the first time during the real so um, that we have um, um, a close relationship during the uh, coro muto mm -hmm. uh, the humming chorus see yeah. uh, I am I the first time I cried yeah I cried because uh, in in this uh, in this scene, uh, the the child is um, is tired, so um, is is tired to to wait uh, his father with me and and and, uh, and Suzuki. So uh, tried to to move himself, and and I and I I have to to teach him to re, to re, re put in the same position. That stop waiting. Mm -hmm. And then I, come si dice, conces, concedere. I, I, I left, I leave, him, I leave yeah. him to, to lay down on my, on my legs and waiting, waiting during his, uh, his sleep. Mm -hmm. sleep. Um, but all this scene with him, so I'm, I'm very um, worried about him because, uh, Yes, I, I'm the only one that I, I believe from the very beginning that, that Pinkerton will come, mm -hmm. uh, will come back. But now uh, that I saw the, um, the boat, now I, ha I have the first doubt. And mm -hmm. he, if, if we will not come, how, 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 how will be my, 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 my little child? Yes. So it's... Um, It's very, it's very intense, and I hope the the audience can understand this, uh, this this relation and this. Uh, probably with the with a, a real child, you can do this. No, you're right. Now, I I don't want to say too much about it because I want people to attend. I, in my opinion, it's a nearly perfect production of this opera. And, I love it so much. And therefore, when you have great singers and you have this beautiful story, um, it's, it's really opera going at its best. So I, I want to conclude because I want you to go cook or, or whatever you have to do to relax. But um, I just have two more questions really. One is, and it's a serious question that I once asked Renata Scotto. What is, Butterfly the Opera and is Chocho's son, is she an Italian character or a Japanese character? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. I'm, I'm not Japanese, so um, I'm Italian. The music is Italian. So um, you have to, to find the, the, the right balance between uh, these two uh, kind of women. Probably in the first act, you can keep more a uh, Japanese character. But in the second act, um, the uh, Chocho san is more close to American style. So you, you, can, uh, you can put more Italian in uh, Italian way to, to, to speak, to, to act. So, The, in that moment, you can find uh, another balance. And in the third act, you have uh, at the very beginning, yes, more maybe more Italian woman, and then uh, you have to end with the Japanese style. Mm -hmm. Yes, because because uh, she um, she understand that it's uh, everything is uh, done, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So he, he came back to, to her origin. Yes, in fact, she has and, renounced and, her Japanese and, religion. Yes. And she's married an American. Lean Teen Price said to me, she looks like a Japanese girl. She sings like an Italian girl, but she wants to be an American girl. Beautiful. Isn't that something? 
Yes. Yeah, she's right. Lean T. Yeah, Price is always right. <laughs> That's all I can say on that topic. Um, and the other question I have, and this too is a serious question. I hear people in Italy, and not only in Italy, say very often, there are no more Italian sopranos. And I point out that there is you, there's Rosa Feola, there's Maria Agresta, but, and others, but people say with every generation, they would say that Barbara Friedley was the last, and Yella de C was the last, Morella Freni, Renata Scotta was the last, Renata Tibaldi and Antoinette Stella were the last. Um, there is this myth about the Italian soprano and who she is and what she represents in the world of opera. And I believe there are always a, a few outstanding Italian sopranos. You were one of them in your generation. Could you define what an Italian soprano is? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help me, please. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I want to believe uh, that um, uh, in, a, in a world that no difference between uh, uh, Italian soprano or American soprano, I I wanna I wanna speak only about uh, good soprano. So this is the important thing um, about this. I I read also some messages uh, on Facebook about uh, my skin color because I'm not an Asian singer, mm. and I think. Uh, uh, they they say that the Met is racist, but I think they are most racist, racist, because uh, uh, it's not important if I I'm white, I'm I'm black, or other uh, other kind of, of skin. For me, it's not important. The important is the voice and mm -hmm. and the singers, and because. Uh, uh, um, we are all the same. We are uh, we are singers. Stop. Mm -hmm. No difference between us. Only the mm, the repertoire. Mm -hmm. So, I'm I'm I, I was really sad for a day, and then I thought, okay, it's uh, it's the world. <laughs> well, Every... stay away from social media because people have their opinions. But I mean, my opinion is that. If we were to stick to that belief, then Leontine Price could not have sung Madame Butterfly or Tosca. And Renata Tabaldi could not have sung Aida. And Yoko Watanabe could not have sung, or let's pick another singer, Haek Young Hung could not have sung Susanna. I, I agree with you 100% that a singer, a good singer is a good singer is a good singer. But yes, what I meant in my uh, question, uh, yes. All is above all these um, questions. It's not. It's not yeah. important uh, the skin color. I agree uh, with you. What so I meant though is that there is a tradition in Italy of a certain kind of soprano and repertory. I mean, yes, for example, Zinka Milanov was not Italian, and she was fantastic in Italian repertory. So, Leontine Price, you don't have to be Italian. But the women who I named, going back to Tibaldi, but we could go back much, much further, Giuditha Pasta, there has always been a tradition of wonderful Italian women singers, sopranos specifically, they're great mezzos, but that's a different story, who carry on a tradition. So that when Morella Freni and Renata Scotto, who were contemporaries, who sang a lot of similar music and who were recipients of a heritage that they got from the generation before. Franey and especially Scotto have passed this on to the Barbara Fritalis and Daniela de C who passed it on to your generation. There is a continuity I see. And some people are saying the continuity has stopped. I don't agree, but if you were to describe what that tradition is, is it the language? Is it where you place the words? Probably, in your mouth? probably we have a, 
uh, advantage with the language, but uh, I admire a lot of uh, uh, foreign singers like uh, Angel Blue, like Jimmy Barton. And if I close my eyes and I, and I, I don't know where they, was, they were born, for, for me, they, they are Italian. So because, because the tradition probably uh, moved in, in all the world. And so now it's not so important. The, yes, it's important the Italian tradition, but the Italian tradition went uh, in, in all the world. And so I'm, I'm really, really happy about this. Well, Jamie Barton is from Rome, Georgia. So that makes her Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Eleonora, I could stay with you a lot longer, but I want you to just go Maybe make a another, tortoise. another time when you I want. I would love that. Go make a tortoise <laughs> brisolona now and relax. And I send can... you the picture of the receipt. <laughs> oh, beautiful. And maybe have a little sushi or some ramen or something Japanese to put you more in the mood. And I really thank you. This was very special. You made me very happy to have you as my hundredth guest. Thank and you. I look uh, forward to hearing you in the opera house and people around the world really listen, especially April 30th on the radio. But if you can get to New York to see this magnificent production with this magnificent soprano, you will be very happy and lucky. So grazie. Grazie. E buon lavoro. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. See you bye. soon.